The race to a water secure future begins here in Moranga. Our journey takes us to the hidden arteries of the capital. Massive, vast works of engineering carved in stone and steel that sustain Nairobi, a city of millions. But today, it's a reservoir. So that is how massive it is in terms of the length to the tip. From the pristine reservoirs cradled in the highlands to the gleaming state-of-the-art treatment plans, all the way to the crowns of Nairobi's iconic skyscrapers. This is the invisible network that keeps the city alive. Without it, Nairobi would not stand as the vibrant metropolis it is today. But the bigger question lingers. Will the city's thirst ever be quenched? Today, my journey takes me from the bustling heart of Nairobi to the rolling hills of Kiambu and Muranga. Here, in valleys veiled in mist and slopes carved by rivers, lies the lifeline of our city. It is secures production of 70,000 cubic meters for subsequent distribution to, to the residents. Every drop that flows when a tap is opened in Nairobi begins its story here. Billions of liters of river and rainwater captured, purified and channeled through a colossal unseen river so that Nairobi, forever thirsty, may drink. This is Nairobi, once just a dusty colonial railway outpost, today a mega city of the future. Here dreams are built and innovations born. Towering skyscrapers, bustling multinationals, glittering hotels. Look at it, man. Beautiful, amazing. beautiful, amazing. But whether at a restaurant savoring a meal, or watching steel towers rise into the sky, there is a silent force binding it all together. That force is water. A pulse that runs through every street, every factory. Every home. It fuels ambition. It powers dreams. It keeps Nairobi ticking. Yet delivering water to more than five million people is no small feat. I'll feel satisfied when in this region that uh, we serve, 
all the communities, men, women, uh, fathers, and all the people have adequate water. They are not queuing for water. They have adequate and affordable water supply. and it looks like it rained yesterday. That is why this section here is flooded and I have to walk on this beam and it's quite dangerous. Well, that is the story of Moranga County whose landscape is made up of deeply dissected topography. And because of its proximity to the Aberdeer Ranges, Moranga County is drained by several rivers, including Maragua River, where I am now. In Gatanga Moranga, where mist hugs the ridges, lies a marvel of modern engineering. The Northern Collector Tunnel, a subterranean channel 12 kilometers long, carved through ancient bedrock. Designed to intercept three rivers, Maragua, Gikige, and Irati, its task, capture their waters and guide them to the mighty Dakaini Dam. Through intake weirs and shafts, the water disappears underground, drawn into the tunnel's dark arteries. Construction began in 2015, but the tunnel's journey was not easy. Engineers battled unstable soils, high groundwater pressure, and the delicate task of working beneath rural villages without disturbing the surface, at times progress slowed to a crawl, but the vision never faded. The reward, 140 million liters of water every single day, enough to serve more than a million people. From the tunnel, the waters flow into Ndakaini Dam, the beating heart of Nairobi's water supply. 63 meters high, stretching nearly a kilometer across, Ndakaini holds an astonishing 70 billion liters, enough to fill 28,000 Olympic swimming pools. Built in 1988, it was engineered for the city's future. Its vast steel intake pipes channel raw water into Ngedu treatment plant, where science transforms it into life. But with the tunnel's new contribution, a second plant was born, Kigiro. This is Kegoro water treatment plant in Moranga County. Every single day, this plant discharges 140 million liters of water destined for Moranga, Kiambu, and Nairobi counties. Pipelines sprawl like giant veins across the landscape. 
here, sediments are removed. Organisms neutralized and water polished to purity before coursing into homes, schools and industries across Nairobi, Moranga and Kiambu. For Earth Waterworks, it was a game changer. It is providing a sustainable water supply to, to, to Kenyans within the Nairobi city. But it wasn't always like this. To understand this story, we must journey back in time. Back to the days when Nairobi and water scarcity were always spoken in the same breath. Long queues of people clutching yellow jerrycans. Out of the installed capacity of about 560, the amount that was coming to Nairobi was actually around 320 because of um, a lack of adequate rehabilitation and, uh, works that were to be undertaken, infrastructure failures, and generally lack of investments in the water and sanitation space. The crisis demanded action. In the early 2000s, the Earthy Water Services Board was born with one urgent mission, to fix what was broken. The rehabilitation efforts, the impacts are visible and tangible. And with the reinstatement of um, the Sasumua, Dika Dam and associated infrastructure, we were able to reinstate water production to the, the desired output of about 560 cubic meters per day. And that is uh, an increase of more than uh, almost around 200,000 cubic meters per day. But the city was growing faster than anyone could have imagined. By 2016, the Earthy Water Services Board had evolved into the Earthy Waterworks Development Agency. Its new mandate, not just supply water, but to develop the bulk infrastructure that will secure Nairobi's future. Indeed, Nairobi's thirst grows endlessly. And so, in Kambu, another masterpiece rose. The Karimenu II Dam. Completed in 2022, Karimenu II Dam is a rock-filled dam with a clay core. Rising 59 meters high, spanning 150 meters, it cradles 23 million cubic meters of water. The dam structure in itself is 400 meters wide. Uh, at the deepest part, it is 59 meters tall. If you understand it as a basin, there is the dam uh, structure. Therefore, <clears throat> the deepest part is probably at the center and it becomes less and less towards the side. Now, this is what we call transformation. A few years ago, this was a valley full of vegetation. But today, it's a reservoir holding back 26 billion liters of water. Every day, Karimenu II Dam delivers nearly 72 million liters of water. It's been over three years of operation now. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that period, uh, we have supplied over 32 uh, billion liters of water. Mm -hmm. That is 32 million cubic meters has been supplied uh, to the public. An incredible boost for one of Africa's fastest growing urban areas. There has been <clears throat> quite a positive impact to, 
uh, the areas of Nairobi, Ruiro, and Juja. Actually, if you find out, uh, uh, at least from Nairobi water mm -hmm. uh, in the recent past, mm -hmm. the shortages have uh, uh, have reduced, especially in areas like Langata, because we supply to a tank uh, called Kiambu tank near Kinap, used to be Kist. From that area, there's a pipeline that goes to uh, uh, to Kasarani and then to Embakasi. So those areas are uh, enjoying. Actually, just recently, areas of Embakasi and uh, Tawala have their connection to fresh water from Nairobi. Most especially due to this addition of the water from the Karimenu the Dam Karimenu. project. Other structures here include a water intake tower, a tunnel, a spillway, and trestle bridge on piers. There are two main features here of importance. There's the lowest scour, uh, scour point, and then there is also one that scours as a bell from above. So the pipe that you see here that connects, or rather that goes to the bottom of the tunnel where we'll have two pipes, is the scour pipe for scouring the bottom of the reservoir. This is removing of the silt to ensure the volume that we have. Uh, the volume that we have for the reservoir is maintained. If you look right behind you, there is a downpipe. Below the tunnel, there are two embedded pipes. One mainly for the purpose of scouring, and the other one for uh, transmission of uh, the raw water to the treatment plant for treatment. From here, Karimenu channels its gift to the treatment plant. Here, raw water is transformed. Sediment stripped. Pathogens destroyed. Clarity restored. There is flo uh, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection happening. At, after which the water is stored in a 5,000 cubic meter tank uh, at the end and then released to the main transmission line that goes to Ruiru and to Nairobi. From chaos to clarity, water emerges ready to serve millions. Construction of dams and water collection facilities is one thing, but the most important thing is that clean water reaches the people, and that is how pipelines come in. Like this one's here, massive. This is where engineering meets human need, where rivers become life-giving veins of a city. From the mist of Muranga to the ridges of Kiambu, the journey of water is one of vision, struggle and triumph. The Northern Collector Tunnel, Dakaini Dam, Karimenutu Dam, together they are the hidden lifelines of Nairobi. As the city grows, so too must its lifelines. And in these tunnels, dams and treatment plans lies the promise of a future that flows with resilience, with hope, with life. My name is Enoxicolia and I am the Kenyan historian.